Hello everyone and th this is video in which we are talking about electric field or electrostatic field due to some continuous charge distributions. In the previous video we have found out the electric field due to a finite uniform linear charge distribution. In this video we will talk about infinite linear charge distribution. So uh, let's proceed with that. If we remember the formula of finite case, finite charge distribution in case of linear, we had two component, one was EX, another was EY. We can use the same here as well. If uh, we remember this EX came out to be K lambda upon perpendicular distance R. Earlier we have used X, here we are using this point P and P is let's say distance R from the wire. If it would have been finite, so this would have been K lambda upon R sine theta 1 plus sine theta 2. And you know this direction was perpendicular to the direction of linear charge. Similarly, we have proved this EY, Y component which came out to be K lambda upon perpendicular distance which is R over here cos theta 1 minus cos theta 2. We can use these relations to find out the field due to infinite linear charge as well. Now if we join this P point to this end point which is going to be at infinite location, so this distance, this angle is going to be approximately 90 degrees, so theta 1 will be approaching to 90 degree. Similarly, this end is also reaching to infinite, so this angle is going to be approaching to 90 degree. So we can say theta 1 in this particular case is going to be approaching 90 degree and theta 2 is also approaching to 90 degree. So if both the ends are reaching to infinite, so theta 1 and theta 2 will be approaching to 90 degree. If we substitute theta 1 and theta 2 in the above components, so we will be finding the EX component. The component perpendicular to the linear charge is going to be K lambda upon R in bracket sine 90 degree plus sine 90 degree. We know sine 90 degree is 1 by trigonometry. So 1 plus 1 will lead to 2. So this component will become 2 K lambda divided by R. I'll end if we talk about this Y component is going to be K lambda upon R in bracket it will become it will become cos 90 minus cos 90 we know cos 90 is 0 so 0 minus 0 will lead to 0 so that means parallel component is going to be 0 and perpendicular component is going to be 2k lambda by r so we can say at this point the field will be only in this direction if the charge is positive and this field will be denoted by E which is equal to EX and EX we have already calculated it is 2k lambda upon R. So that's going to be 2k lambda upon R. So due to, a, uh, due to an infinite linear uniform charge field at any point R from that charge is radially outward and it is 2k lambda upon R. If we need to write in this in terms of vector we can write E vector is going to be equal to 2K. K is a constant we know 1.4 pi epsilon naught lambda which is linear charge density divided by R and R cap. Now if lambda is a positive we are going to write it as a positive. If lambda is a negative so this will have a minus sign which will be going to minus R cap direction that means towards the linear charge distribution. So this is also an important result that we need to remember. Here is, it is proved, it has been proved. So this is final field due to a uniform infinite linear charge. Well after learning this electric field formula because of um, infinite, infinite cases, case of uh, uniform linear charge distribution. Now let's consider for semi-infinite charge distribution. We call it as a semi-infinite if 
the linear charge runs from one end which is finite to another end which is at infinite location so if we are getting charge in linearly distributed in such a way that one end is approaching to infinite and another is at this location finite so from this and finite end at a distance r let's say there is a point p at this point p we need to find out the field due to this entire charge distribution again we can remember or we can recall that finite case formula in case of finite charge distribution we had ex and ey and recalling them this ex is k lambda upon r sin theta 1 plus sin theta 2 and this ey component came out to be k lambda upon r cos theta 1 minus cos theta 2 now again if we can find out theta 1 and theta 2 our answer for this same infinite case will be clear now we know this uh, this end is approaching to infinite so joining this point to this infinite this angle is going to be almost 90 degree which we used to call it as a theta 1 so we can say in this particular case theta 1 will be approaching to 90 degree however theta 2 which we used to join the another end point here this reference line will be acting as the another end point so theta 2 which has to be measured upside is 0 so theta 2 will lead to 0 now if we substitute these values of theta 1 and theta 2 then this will be for semi infinite linear uniform charge so let's put it here and find what the ex is coming out this will lead to ex as equal to k lambda upon r in the bracket sin 90 degree plus sin 0 degree we know sin 0 is 0 sin 90 is 1 so ex component will become equal to or we can say this ex comes out to be k lambda upon r similarly ey component can be calculated this ey component comes out to be k lambda upon r in the bracket cos 90 degree minus cos 0 degree we know cos 90 is 0 cos 0 is 1 so this is going to be minus 1 we can call it as ey going to be equal to minus k lambda upon r now we have already talked about this minus sign will say the direction of uh, e vector at this point so ex is going to be in this direction as uh, k lambda upon r but ey will not be in that direction ey will be in the direction opposite to theta 1 that is in this direction so we will have a two component of field one in this direction it is going to be k lambda upon r and another component will be in this direction which is going to be k lambda upon r so we will have a field k, k lambda upon r in the vertical or parallel to the wire or charge and k lambda upon r perpendicular to that charge in case of semi infinite so if we are interested in finding the total field so total field will be at a bisector angle since both the components are equal so this angle is going to be 45 degree finally we can we can say the net field e comes out to be squaring and under root these two numbers we are going to get k lambda upon r square root of 2 and that will make 45 degree from one of the two directions so because of semi infinite this is the formula or better we can remember in the in terms of components components is going to be k lambda upon r and k lambda upon r if this is positive so we can naturally think of the component is going to be uh, a very repelling so it has to be a parallel component will be in the upward direction right? so that's that's an important result we need to remember thank you